So let's discuss the differences between animal cell and plant. Hello guys, this is Fifty TV Sri Lanka and welcome to a brand new science lesson and this is chapter 6 structure and functions of a cell basic unit of life in 1665 robert hooke observed a section of cork using a microscope prepared by him he discovered a structure like chambers in a bee hive and he named them as cells Schleiden, Schwann and Radolf Virchow introduced the cell theory based on the facts revealed by observing different live tissues through the microscope. Schleiden, Schwann and Radolf Virchow introduced the cell theory. The contents of the cell theory are as follows. New cells are formed from pre-existing cells. The structural and functional unit of life is the cell and all organisms are made up of one or more cells. The contents of the cell theory are the, structure, the structural and functional unit of, the, of life is the cell and all organisms are made up of one or more cells and new cells are formed from pre-existing cells. Concept of the cell The cell is the smallest structural unit of the organization of the living body. The organisms composed of a single cell are called unicellular organisms and those of many cells are called multicellular organisms. Organisms composed of a single cell are called unicellular and as well as the organisms composed of many cells are called multicellular organisms. Cells perform different functions in the body. According to the smallest bio unit that is adapted to perform a particular function is the cell. So it is clear that the structural and functional unit of life is the cell. Structure of cells Let's discuss this activity, activity number, activity number one in your textbook, study of animal cells. and. The steps and the steps are wash the mouth and scrape the inner side of the cheek using a yogurt spoon and obtain a clean glass slide and put a drop of water and transfer the specimen onto the slide. Cover the specimen using a cover slip without trapping in air bubbles and observe through the light microscope. And the appearance or the observation of this microscope is this. Let's discuss activity number two in your textbook, study of plant cells. Cut an onion and, opt opt cut an onion and obtain an inner fleshy tissue as shown in the diagram. Remove a peel from inner or outer surface of it and transfer it onto a wash glass containing water. Put a water drop onto a clean glass slide and transfer the specimen onto the slide using a paintbrush. Cover it with a cover slip without trapping any air bubble and observe it. The appearance or observation of this light microscope is this. Typical cell The small structures present within the cell to perform different functions are known as organelles. The small structures present within the cell to perform different functions are known as organelles. The types of organelles and the number of them differ according to the function performed by the cell. The cell prepared by including all the organelles is known as the typical cell and in the living world such cells do not exist. The cell prepared by including all the organelles is known as typical cells and in the living world such cells do not exist.
This is a cross-sectional of a plant cell. So here you can see the nucleus and here nucleolus. Here mitochondria, here, here cytoplasm, ribosomes, smooth endoplasmic reticulum, smooth endoplasmic reticulum without ribosomes, and this is Golgi complex, vacuole, nucleolus, and this is mitochondria. So let's discuss the differences between animal cell and plant cell. Cell wall absent in animal cell and cell wall present in plant cell. Large content of it contains cytoplasm in animal cell and cytoplasm pushed towards periphery in plant cell. A large vacuole is absent and sometimes few small vacuoles may present in animal cells and a large central vacuole of few vacuoles may present in plant cell. Chloroplast absent in animal cell, chloroplast present in plant cell. Cell organelles and structure present in a cell. Cell wall. The outermost covering of the plant cell is the cell wall. It is a dead structure. It is non-living structure. The main constituent of it is cellulose. It is made up of cellulose. And other than it, semicellulose and pectin are also present in that cell wall. And other than it, semicellulose and pectin are also present in this cell wall. The main functions of the cell wall are to maintain the shape of the cell and support and protection of the cell. Plasma membrane or we can call it as cell membrane too. Plasma membrane is present interior to the cell wall of plant cells. The boundary of the animal cell is the plasma membrane and it is made up of phospholipids and proteins. Plasma membrane is a semi-permeable membrane and the main function of it is to enclose the cell, allow entry of water ions and some molecules. It is a semi-permeable membrane. Let's talk about cytoplasm. The gelatinous liquid part of the cell excluding organelles is known as the cytoplasm. Inorganic and organic substances are present in it. The functions of the cytoplasm are to maintain a shape to the cell, be a cell organelles and carry out different metabolic processes. Nucleus Nucleus is the main organelle in a cell and it is surrounded by a nuclear envelope. One or two nucleolus and the chromatin body are present inside the nucleus. During cell division, the chromatin body converts into chromosomes. The functions of chromosomes are the storage of genetic materials and transfer inherited characters from generation to generation. 
mitochondria it is an oval or rod shaped membrane bounded organ aerobic respiratory reaction takes place within the mitochondria to release energy so it is known as the powerhouse of the cell and the energy produced within the mitochondria is used for the metabolic activities of the cell mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell golgi complex membrane bound and sac sac on the top of the other with associated secretory vesicles are collectively known as golgi complex the functions of golgi complex is the production of secretory substances packing them and secretion ribosomes They are small organelles without a membrane and it is made up of a large subunit and a small subunit. They can be found freely in the cytoplasm or attached to endoplasmic reticulum. The function of it is the protein synthesis. Endoplasmic reticulum rough endoplasmic reticulum endoplasmic reticulum being a rough due to ribosomes attached to the membrane the function of it is the transportation of proteins within the cell and the other part of reticulum is smooth endoplasmic reticulum it is a network of tubular sacs without ribosomes on the membrane synthesis of lipids steroids and to transport them within the cell are the functions of side smooth endoplasmic reticulum back you all It is a fluid filled large organ found in plant cell which is surrounded by a membrane the membrane that surrounds the vacuole is known as sonoplast the fluid contained in it known as the cell sac the membrane that surround the vacuole is known as sonoplast and the fluid contained in the vacuole is cell sac water sugar ions and pigments store within the vacuole Generally no vacuoles are found sometimes small vacuoles may present in animal cells contractile vacuoles can be found in unicellular organisms maintenance of water balance support and provision of color to the cell by the pigments within it are the functions of the vacuole cell growth cell growth and cell division First, let's talk about cell growth. Growth is a basic feature of organisms, and growth of a cell is the irreversible increase of size or dry mass. Growth of a cell is the irreversible increase of size or dry mass. But a cell has a maximum limit to grow, and beyond that level, the cell will not grow. Instead, it divides. And now, let's talk about cell division. The cell has the ability to grow and multiply its number. Accordingly, a cell can multiply into 2, 4 and 8 cells. By multiplication, new cells are formed. The cells multiply by cell division. The cell division is the process by which new cells are formed by the division of cellular materials. To complete the cell division of an eukaryotic cell, first the nucleus should divide and then the cytoplasm should divide. Before the division of nucleus the chromosomes which contains and transfers genetic materials 
to the e- the materials the inherited characters from generation to generation can be seen clearly there are 46 chromosomes in a chromosomal set of human and this is comprised of 23 pairs of chromosomes A pair of chromosomes which contains same hereditary information is called as homologous pair of chromosomes. One of these homologous homologous one of these homologous chromosomes is inherited from father whereas the other is from mother. Accordingly human inherits 46 chromosomes receiving 23 chromosomes from father and another 23 chromosomes from mother. mitosis it is the type of division which multiplies the number of cells by maintaining constant number of chromosomes in the cells first the nuclear divides and then the cytoplasm divides to produce two identical daughter cells equal to mother cell the uses of mitosis are the, for the growth of multicellular organisms as an asexual reproduction method wound healing and cell replacement Now let's talk about meiosis. After the gametes been fused, the number of chromosomes of species should be maintained constant. For that, the number of chromosomes should be halved during the formation of gametes and become n, and that means haploid. The cell division that halved the number of chromosomes is the meiosis. The meiosis takes place during the formation of gametes, eggs and sperms in higher organisms. Meiosis takes place in two stages. The first stage is a meiotic division and reducing division. Meiosis takes place in two stages and the first stage is meiotic division and that means redu- reduction division and the next stage is a mitosis. During the meiosis structural changes occur in uh, during the during the meiosis structural changes occur in chromosomes there are for new variations or new characters appear in organisms and this is a very important phenomena in evolution maintenance of the constant number of chromosomes from generation to generation and help in evolution due to variation occur in chromosomes are the characteristics or uses of meiosis so let's talk about differences between meiosis and mitosis takes place in two divisions only in one division take place only in diploid cells take place in both diploid and haploid cells variations occur thus changes take place in chromosomes no variation the changes in chromosomes are rare four daughter cells result at the end of the division and in mitosis two daughter cells result at the end of the division so guys thanks for watching up to the very end and if you have any problem leave a comment and if you like this video put a like too don't forget to subscribe so bye bye